Hello everyone, Efrelech Chanika. thank you for joining the virtual share today. Sorry I can't be there live tonight. So we are holding on Chav Gimel Amid Beis, and we have one Mishtabura left from yesterday's Sif. That would be Mishtabura Ois Katan Chav Zayin, Im Hayad Seledes So we had, the Ramah said over here, we were talking about a cliché on Pesach. So we were talking about, let's say, where you had a case, um, uh, the case that we had was you cooked chicken and you found a chita, a kernel of grain that looks like it became chametz inside the chicken. So we said that if you cooked that chicken um, on Erev Pesach, so then the tam of the chita was bottled the shishim. If you reheated the chicken after, when it was already Pesach, if you reheated the chicken on Pesach, now the new tam that comes out of the chita in the chicken can't be bottled because now it's already on Pesach. On Pesach, it's also B'mashehu. The Ramah had said on the bottom of Chav Gimel Amad Aleph that some people are machmer by a cliché on Pesach. That case would be if you took this chicken and you poured... Um, first, first Ramah said by a cliché we don't have to worry. If you took the chicken and the way you reheated it was you took the chicken, you put it inside a keli, you boiled up water in a pot, now you took that water and you poured it over the chicken in the pot. So now the chicken is not getting rewarmed in a klirishin. The chicken is getting rewarmed in a klisheni. So first the Ramah said on the bottom of Chav Gimel Abel Aleph, Miu B'chivim Klisheni Ein Lachush. But then he said, V'yesh Machmir in B'chlisheni B'Pesach. There are those that are Machmir on a klisheni on Pesach. And the Ramah said, Toiv L'Hachmir Im Hayat Seledes by It's better, it's good to be Machmir if the water is the temperature of Yad Seledes, says the Mishnah Burais Kat Chav Zayin, am I Yad Seledes by? V'afte besim in Tav Samach Zayin Sif Yud Beis. Even though later on in Tav Samach Zayin Sif Beis, Mashma Me Ramah, we're going to see that the Ramah implies the Oiser Habasar Shenishra Af Betzaynein Kishenimsa Shamchita. Over there, the Ramah seems to say that if you had meat that was uh, soaking even in cold water and you found a kernel of grain, and over there, the Ramah seems to be Machmer. Over there, we were talking about water, uh, we were talking about meat that has fissures, where the water, the water has uh, hummus from that chita in it, and now the water is going to go into the meat, it's going to penetrate the meat through the fissures that are in the meat. Because now the water that has the chita, the chita soaked in the water, and now the, the chita that's in the water is going to go into the meat in its fissures. So over there we don't need heat. It's not heat that's drawing anything inside. It's that this meat has fissures and crevices. The kan mayri b'doifin shalim. Over here we're talking about something smooth. Sha'az eina basar nesar el mimayim chamen. If the meat, if the surface of the meat is smooth, so then the only way you get any penetration into the meat is through heat transference. The cham and lemikri rakish ayat se lettuce by, and when we talk about cham, when we talk about heat, we're always talking about a temperature that exceeds yad se lettuce by. Avalamayim ba atzman asurin ayidea chita. But the water itself, if it had chita soaking in the water, so the water becomes asur even without heat. The big Yesha disagrees with this. And he says that over here, from the Ramah, the Ramah seems very clear that when you have cold water, there's nothing to worry about. Over here, the Ramah is telling you that on a, from a, a halacha standpoint, you should be machmer by klisheni, and there's only room to be machmer if the temperature of the water is a yad seledes. V'sham hu rakmi min haga shenagu lahachmer af b'tzaynin. Later on, at Tav Samach Zayin, when the implication of the Ramah is that we should be no yisr, even by tzaynin, over there he's talking about a minig, chumr de pischa. Obinin min haga ha-mekel b'makam atchak lehifsid. And when it comes to a minig, if you're being mekel in the area of a minig, in a makam atchak, in pressing circumstances, you have nothing to lose. Okay, now we turn to Siv Dalit. So we're on the top of Chav Gimel Amid Beis, the first line, near the end of the first line, Siv Dalit in the Mechaber. Im nisarev ha-chametz kaidem pesach If you have chametz that was introduced into a mixture before Pesach begins, 
And right away, nice cut and chav ches, the Mishnah Bura says, Kai de Pesach, afilu achashesh. Even if it's after the Zman of Iser, but it's already Pesach. So, in this Erev Acham, it's Kai de Pesach. I'm sorry, it's not Pesach. It's Erev Pesach, but it's after the Zman of Iser. So the Mechaber says, in this Erev Acham, it's Kai de Pesach. If Chametz is introduced into a mixture before Pesach begins, so it's Erev Pesach after the Zman of Iser, but Pesach did not yet start. So we said that on Erev Pesach, before Pesach begins, Chametz is not Aser B'mashahu. We said that the Chachamim made a Chumrah that Chametz is Aser B'mashahu because it's an Iser Krisus. Now the Iser Krisus only begins on Pesach itself. It doesn't start by Chatzois on Erev Pesach at the Zman of Iser. The Iser Krisus only comes on Pesach. So now, if you have chametz that was introduced into a mixture before Pesach, so it's not yet also b'mashu, and therefore in this battle b'shishim, so this chametz was it became bottle because you have shishim of heter connected the chametz. You have sixty times the chametz. In that case, says the mechaber, enoi chayzer v'neir b'pesach. That iser is not reawakened on Pesach, less or b'mashahu, so that it should become Aser and Amashu. So again, let's just have clarity. What's the case over here? It's Erev Pesach. It's after the Zman of Iser. Right now, Chametz could be bottled b'shishim. Even though Chametz is Aser b'mashahu, that's only on Pesach. On Pesach, Chametz is Aser b'mashahu, because it's an Iser Krisus. On Erev Pesach, after the Zman of Iser, Chametz could still be bottled b'shishim. So here we have a case that on Erev Pesach, after the Zman of Iser, Chametz was introduced into a mixture. You have shishim keneged the Chametz, so it was bottled on Erev Pesach. Now the question is, what happens when Pesach begins? Do we say Chayzer v'neyar? Now that Pesach started, now Chametz is also b'mashu. So do we say that it's very nice that on Erev Pesach, this little bit of Chametz was bottled to Shishim, but now Pesach started. Now Chametz is also Bamashu. Do we say Chayzer v'neyar? Do we say that this little bit of Chametz that was bottled on Erev Pesach is now reawakened on Pesach and it's also Bamashu and it asses the Taruvis or not? So the first opinion that Mechaber brings down is he says, It does not reawaken when Pesach begins, lesser b'mashu, so that now it should aser a taruvis and a mashu. Let's see the Mishtabru. Says the Mishtabru, is cut ches. This chametz was introduced into the mixture, said the Mechaber, Kaidem Pesach, before Pesach began, says the Mishtabru, Afilu achar sheish. Even if it's after Chatzois, even if it's after this Mano Iser. And the, the, the uh, Mechaber said that We do not say that this mute of Chametz, this little bit of Chametz, that became bottled B'Shishim on Erev Pesach, we don't say that it's Chayzer Neir, and now it asses a Taruvis and a Mashu. Says the Mishnah Rai's Katn Chav Tes, less of a Mashahu, and the Chavetz Chaim brings down a, a case, some case history here, a precedent. Maisa Shedim Tseis Chala Achas Shel Botzek, Besoy Chasal, Shel Yunoisten Amatsoy Safuyay Spitz Yasan Minatano. There was a Maisa that happened, and at first it sounds like a Peladika Maisa, but it's not such a Peladika Maisa. What happened was they found a dough. They found an unbaked clump of dough that was in the basket when they take the matzahs out of the oven. You have hot matzahs coming out of the oven, and they're taking those and they're putting them into a sal. They're putting them in a basket. In the basket, they found a clump of unbaked dough, and that dough was sitting there for a long time, so that dough became chametz. Now, any matzah that came into contact with that dough so you have a hot matzah straight out of the oven. It came into contact with the dough. It's bailea chametz. It takes in tam from the chametz by touching that chametz stick of dough. So now what's the story? What's the halacha? So says the chametz chayim, my said it was such a story. They found a chala dough. In other words, it's a dough that became chametz. Inside the basket, 
where they would place the freshly baked matzahs, the hot matzahs, when they came right out of the oven. And now they emptied out the matzahs from the basket. So let's say you have 35 matzahs that go into the basket straight out of the oven. We know for sure that a mute of these matzahs, some of these matzahs came into contact with that chametz stick of dough. Those matzahs have a problem because those matzahs were by Leia chametz from the dough. But now the basket was emptied out. We have 35 matzahs and we have no idea which matzahs touched the dough and which matzahs did not touch the dough. We know that it's a mute. We know that it's only a minority of the matzahs that touched the dough, but we don't know which ones they are. They emptied out the basket. And we don't know which matzahs came into contact with the dough. The Paiskim ruled the Chad Betray bottle that over here you're going to say that it's a straight bittle Bereiv. One would be bottle, one matzah would be bottle in two because this is a mixture of Yavesh be Yavesh. These are dry items getting mixed up with dry items. It's matzahs that are getting mixed up with each other. You have the matzahs of Isser, those are the matzahs that came into contact with the dough, and you have the matzahs of Heter that did not come into contact with the dough. That's bottle in a straight rove. The matzahs that came into contact with the dough are bottle in a straight rove against the other matzahs. Kevin Chahoyah HaTarovus Kaidim Pesach. Because when did this happen? That happened before Pesach. It happened on Erev Pesach, Maybe after the Zman of Isser, but it happened before Pesach. So since it happened before Pesach, it's bottled in a straight roiv. Not only is it not a problem, not only are the matzahs bottled, um you can now take those matzahs on Pesach. You're sitting down to the Seder, and you want to eat your matzah shal mitzvah, and you want it to be nice and crispy, so you want to stick them in the oven before you eat them. You could rewarm these matzahs on Pesach. Now, what would be the potential problem with that? You might be tempted to say, maybe this matzah that I'm rewarming on Pesach, maybe this is the matzah that came into contact with the dough on Erev Pesach. Now, we say that you're allowed to eat the matzah on Pesach because the matzah that touched the dough was bottled in all of the other matzahs that did not touch the dough, and all of the matzahs are mutter. But maybe it's a problem to rewarm the matzah. Because if this is the matzah that touched the dough, maybe we're going to say chayzer v'neyar on the tam of the chametz that went into the matzah. Maybe now we'll say chayzer v'neyar. But we know already from yesterday that that's not true. Says the Mishtabrura, it's not a problem. Muta l'chamim ha-matzah pe-pesach. You could rewarm the matzah on Pesach. Kevon d'leka ela taimo ba'alma. Because even if this is the matzah that touched the dough, right now there's no be'en of chametz. There's no physical presence of chametz over here. It's only bliss. It's only tam that we're afraid the matzah took in tam from the dough when it was hot and it touched the dough. But we said yesterday, lekulei alma, we don't say chayz of on tam. We only say chayz of when there's an actual physical presence of iser, not when there's only tam of iser. So over here, muto lechami mamasis pesach kev deleka ela taima ba'alma. However, the chavetz chaim continues. Umiu kol amatzah is sheyadua shenogu babatzek tzrich and klipa. However, if there's a matzah here that we know came into contact with the dough, that matzah you have to remove kidei klipa. You have to remove a little bit of the matzah at the point of contact between the matzah and the dough. Levisha ein bittel leisar hayadua. We can't be mavatel what we know touched the batzek. We can only be bevatel what we don't know. We have a suffix over here. We don't know, is this the matzah that touched the iser or not? Is this the matzah that touched the chametz? We don't know where that matzah is. We could say it's bottle. But if we know where it is, over there we have to remove the part that came into contact with the, uh, with the chametz tikkado. Okay, so so far we have seen over here the first opinion in the Mechaber. This is the more lenient opinion who says, just to, just to say it nice and short and sweet, concise, if, if chametz was a bottle on Erev Pesach Bishishim, on Erev Pesach, even after the Zman of Iser, it's not Osir B'mashahu, so it could become bottle. If it was bottle on Erev Pesach, 
now when Pesach begins, we do not say Chayzer V'neir. We don't say that now that Iser is reawakened and now it becomes a problem. However, continues the Mechaber, V'yeish Chalkim. However, there are those that disagree with this Psak, and there are those who rule more stringently, and it brings down here in the Baragoyle, Kei Nira B'divrei HaRambam, V'harav HaMagid B'shem Harbe Magainim, V'haritz Geos V'rabein Yeruchim B'shem HaRashba, so you have Rishonim over here that are Chaylik, and they say that we do say Chayzer V'neir. Now exactly what the Bachleikis is, why some Rishonim say we say Chayzer V'neir, and other Rishonim say we don't, it could be that one of the reasons we say Chayzer V'neir is because let's analyze what's happening over here. Why is the Chametz bottle Bishishim on Erev Pesach? The reason it's bottle Bishishim on Erev Pesach is not really that it's a bottle Bishishim. What's happening over here is, on Pesach itself, Chametz is an Iser Karis. When Chametz is an Iser Karis, then the Chachamim made a Chumrah, and the Chachamim said, Chametz is also Bamashu. On Erev Pesach, the Chachamim don't make that Chumrah. So on Erev Pesach, Chametz is like any other Iser, and it's Batal Bashishim. So now the question is, how do you look at it? Do you say that this Chametz was Batal on Erev Pesach, and therefore it's gone, and we don't say Chayz of Or do we say, it's not Pshat that this Iser Chametz was Batal on Erev Pesach. This Iser Chametz did not exist on Erev Pesach. On Erev Pesach, there is no Din de Rabbanon that Chametz is also Mamashu. It doesn't exist. So the Iser of the Mashu wasn't bottle on Erev Pesach. It didn't exist on Erev Pesach. The Chametz was bottle on Erev Pesach like any other Din of Iser. Any Iser is bottle Bishishim. So the Chametz was bottle on Erev Pesach, it was bottle Bishishim. But the Iser of Chametz Bamashu, that extra Chumrah of the Chachamim, in the context of that Iser, there was no Bittal. That Iser didn't exist on Erev Pesach. It first comes into existence when Pesach begins. So it's Chayzer V'neir. Okay, so we have this Machleikis over here, the Mechaber. We have these two opinions. Do we say Chayzer V'neir or do we not say Chayzer V'neir when the Chametz was Batal Bishishim on Erev Pesach before Pesach began? And now we go into the Bishtabura Ois Katan Lamed. The Yesh Chalkin. So we have this more stringent opinion that rules that we do say Chayz of and even if the Chamas was bought on Erev Pesach, it becomes problematic Bemashahu on Pesach itself. Now the Chavetz Chaim points out, Ula Daitam. According to this opinion, Masha Kosov Besiv Beis, the bottle Beshishim, this that we said yesterday, or maybe the day before, when we said that on Erev Pesach, Chamas is bottle Beshishim. What exactly is that negaya to? It's very nice that the Chametz is Batal Bishishim, but if we're going to say that it's Chayzer V'neir once Pesach begins, so what do I care that it's Batal Bishishim on Erev Pesach? What's the point? Says the Chavetz Chaim, Ula Daitam, according to this more stringent opinion, Masha Kosov Besif Beis, the Batal Bishishim, Tzarek La'ach Lai Kaitam Pesach. All we're telling you is, it's Batal Bishishim on Erev Pesach, and you could eat this food before Pesach begins, but you got to eat it before Pesach begins. Or the other point could be where, the, where we want you to know that if we're dealing with Tam, if we're dealing with only a Tam of Chametz that was pilot from something else, so now by Tam we say once it's bottled, it's not Chayz of That we said everybody agrees that you don't say Chayz of when there's no physical presence of Chametz when it's only Tam. The Chanal Ba'is Chafalf. Now we turn to the Ramah. Says the Ramah Haga, what do we do, Lamaisa? Which opinion do we follow? Says the Ramah Haga, the Nehagin Kisvara Harishayna, the Chal Taruva Shuhulach Balach. The Ramah says that when we're dealing with a Taruvis of Lach Balach, of wet ingredients, for example, the example that the Mishnah Brewer is going to bring down would be beer that got mixed with wine. So if you have a chametz stick of beer, and a little bit of beer poured into Pesach stick of wine, that's a taruvus of lach balach, it's all wet ingredients. Over there we follow the more lenient opinion, and we say if this taruvus happened on Erev Pesach, and you had shishim, you had 60 of the Pesach stick ingredients, uh, keneged the chametz stick ingredients, so you had 60 of the yayin, keneged 
the little bit of the beer. Over there, we would say it's part on air of Pesach, and it's not chayz of an air on Pesach. Says the Mishnah Bura, and I's cut lamed aleph. V'nayhagin kisfara harishayna umuter, and in such a case, this would remain permissible. Afilu chazray v'chima may ba Pesach, even if you went ahead now and you warmed up that wet mixture on Pesach. I don't know, let's say you were dealing with a soup, you were dealing with a chicken soup, and somehow a drop of beer fell into the chicken soup on Erev Pesach. So it's lach balach. So on Erev Pesach, it was bottle b'shishim. Now you could even rewarm the soup on Pesach. And we're not going to say chayz of a on the tam of the, of the beer, because again, everybody agrees we don't say chayz of a when it comes to tam. Um, so that's Shehulach Balach, Ice Cut and Lamed Beis, Kigoyin Shekhar, Shenesar of Biyayin, like beer that got mixed into wine, or Kahai Gavna, or anything similar. Now, the Mishtabur just points out another halacha that we wouldn't know because we're not learning your day here, we're learning our Chayim. Says the Mishtabur, the Kemach Bekemach, if you're dealing with Pesach stick of flour and Chomet stick of flour. So you have a little bit of chametz stick of flour got mixed into Pesach stick of flour. Gam kein mikri lach balach. That's also called a mixture of lach balach. Even though we're dealing with flour, and flour is certainly dry, in this context it's considered lach balach. The reason it's called lach balach is because the svara, why lach balach is more kuladik, is because when you mix together wet ingredients, let's say the drop of beer into the into the, uh, the shishim of wine, the iser is no longer considered to be be'en. You can't find it anywhere. You can't pull it out anywhere. It's not be'en. It's not physically noticeable. It's not nicker anymore. So too by kemach bekemach, when something is ground so fine, when you mix a tiny bit of chametz stick of flour into pesach stick of flour, it might as well be lach balach. You can't find it. It's not be'en anymore. Bring down. When you're dealing with a lach balach taruvis, even if you're not aware that this mixture took place in Tol Pesach, we still say that it was bottle on air of Pesach, and it remains bottle. It doesn't matter that you didn't find out about it until Pesach. Even though you found out about it on Pesach, since you know that it happened on Erev Pesach, it was already bottle, and now we do not say Chayz of Ener. Now we go to the bottom line of Chav Gimel Amid Beis. We continue with the words of the Ramah. Says the Ramah, that's true by Taruvas of Lach Balach. By Lach Balach, we know you like the Sefar Rishayna, we go like the more lenient opinion. Umiu. If we're dealing with something dry, that got mixed up, or where there's a problem where we have to be afraid that there's still physical presence of a dvarisser in a mixture. For example, when we're dealing with a piece of bread that fell into wine, even if we took the bread out of the wine, Aser Pesach, that taruvis remains Aser on Pesach, the Chayshinon, because we have to worry, Shemanish Arubai Pirurin, maybe there are still crumbs of the bread in the mixture, the Neustin Tam Pesach, and they are introducing Tam of Chametz into the mixture on Pesach itself, when on Pesach, Chametz is not Botel B'Shishim, it's Aser B'Mashu. And he brings this down, the Beisaisa brings it down in the shame of the Chuvas Harajba. Let's see what the Mishnah Brewer says. Ice cotton lamed gimel al chav gimel lamed base. Umiu bedaver yave shenis arav kaid de pesach. When you have dry chametz stick ingredients that got introduced into a mixture before pesach, bein shenis arav chametz bematzah chad betray. Whether you have chametz that got mixed together with matzah and you don't, you only have a straight rov. You have one against two, like the case that we had before of the matzahs that touched chametz in the matzahs that are fine. Or you have a dry ingredient of chametz that got introduced into a mixture where you even have shishim connected. Over there, since we're talking about a dry chametz stick ingredient, even though it was bottle, even if it was bottle on Erev Pesach, 
we're going to say Chayza V'neir on Pesach. Why? Mishum Shehachametz Be'en. Because now when we're talking about a, a something that's Yavesh, that is something which is very discernible in the mixture. It's very noticeable in the mixture. That's considered Chametz Be'en. And by Chametz Be'en, over there, according to this opinion, we're going to follow the more stringent opinion, and we're going to say Chayza V'neir. Valkein Tzarech L'ach Kaidim Pesach. And therefore, you would have to eat this before Pesach. On Pesach, it would be Aser, it would be Chayza V'neir. V'im Hayachad betray, and if this Taruvus is only one against two, if the, the Chametz in this Taruvus was only bottle in a straight rive, Aser Af Lahashais Bidr then it's even Aser to keep maintain this in your possession on Pesach. V'im Hayashishim, Yachal Avash Lo Pesach, if the dry ingredient was bottled b'shishim before Pesach began, again, after the Zmana Iser, on Erev Pesach, but before Pesach began. So now, the Chavetz Chaim tells you, there is a cute kunst that you could take advantage of. In my Yashishim, if it was bottled b'shishim, Yachal Lavash Lo Pesach, now you could take this mixture. So let's say you had a tiny piece of bread that fell into your Pesach ticket chicken soup. And it happened on Erev Pesach. And you have shishim in the chicken soup, connected the piece of bread. So the piece of bread was bottled with shishim. The problem is, we're going to say chay zavineir, because the piece of bread is a davar yavesh. And since it's a davar yavesh, we're going to say chay zavineir, like the more ridiculous opinion. So now the Chavetz Chaim tells you there's a cute kunz. The kunz is, before Pesach begins, put the chicken soup back on the fire, cook up the chicken soup so that this little tiny piece of bread should break down and disintegrate. Until this tiny piece of bread would disintegrate completely. And now even the dry piece of bread now becomes a davar lach because now it disintegrates. Now it's considered a mixture of lach belach. And since this happened on Erev Pesach, even though it was after the Zman Yisr, since it happened on Erev Pesach, now we would follow the Kuladik opinion, and we would no longer say Chayz of an Eir, Vaz Mutter Af Lach Leib Pesach, and now it'll be Mutter to eat this on Pesach. V'yesh kama achreinim she soivrim da af yavish bi yavish, da amrina da Chayz of an Eir, there are other achreinim that are mekel, and say that even though by a taruvus of yavish bi yavish, we say chayz of an ayar, ainoy elim kain yoyfe o yavashel oysam be pesach. We only say chayz of an ayar when now on pesach you heat the taruvis up. If you leave the taruvis alone the way it was on air of pesach, we're not going to say chayz of an ayar. The problem of chayz of an ayar, according to these achreinim, is you took the taruvis that had the yavesh chametz in it and now you cooked it up on pesach. Now you have a problem. Because now the Yavesh Chametz that's in the Taruvis is going to be pilot, it's going to let out new Tam into the Taruvis on Pesach. And that Taruvis, that Tam that's coming out on Pesach, that's not bottle, that's not bottle, that's also Bamashu. Shari, but to eat it the way it is, that would be Mutter. The Ramah continued over here. And he said, if we're talking about a case, let's say, where bread fell into wine, so the Lashon of the Ramah was, even if you took the bread out of the wine, it still remains Aser on Pesach. Says the Mishnah Roy's cut in Lamadal, and Afopish in the Talai Misham, Ritzayin Eloi Markeidim Pesach, even if you removed the piece of bread from the wine before Pesach, we're still going to have a problem, it's still going to be Aser on Pesach. Says the Mishnah Roy's cut in Lamadal, and Afopish in the Talai Misham, Ritzayin Eloi Pesach, it's usher to drink this wine on Pesach. Avon mutter bahana, but it would be mutter bahana. Umikol shikay the mutter lekaimai. Certainly, you're allowed to retain possession of it. You don't have to worry that there's an iser of bayirav on your matzei came into a rak shash ba'alma. Since over here we're only dealing with a possible shash, a possible worry. You took the bread out of the wine, but maybe there are crumbs. Ice cotton lamed vav. What's the problem over here? The Chayshin on Shema, the Ramah said, we have to worry that there might be crumbs left in the wine. Ritzayin Olaymar, what's the problem here? Ritzayin Olaymar, what's the problem here? 
we wouldn't answer the wine simply because we're afraid that there might be tam of the bread in the wine because the bread soaked in the wine. That we wouldn't worry about. Because like we've said already many, many times, we don't say chayzavaneir by tam. So since you removed the bread from the wine before Pesach began, if we were only worried about the tam that had escaped from the bread into the wine, we wouldn't say chayzavaneir. We would say that that was bottle on air Pesach, we don't worry about it. So what is the worry over here? Our problem over here is very nice. You took the piece of bread out of the wine. But did you get all the crumbs? We don't know that you got all the crumbs. On the crumbs, we would say, The Achreinim agree over here that we only would have to be machmir and worry about the crumbs possibly being in the wine if we did not strain the wine before Pesach began. Aval im sinenoi, but if you did strain it, shari, it would be mutter, after nishre meyes ace, even if the bread had remained in the wine for 24 hours, im ye shishim bayayin neged kalapas, as long as you had shishim in the yayin keneged the pas, because even if tam escaped from the bread into the yayin, it was batal b'shishim on Erev Pesach. Vedafka b'yayin shuut salul, this is only true that you could get away with straining it if it's clear wine, and you could effectively strain it by using a fine strainer that would definitely remove any breadcrumbs. Where the strainer is so fine that it's not possible for any breadcrumbs to escape the strainer and remain in the wine. But if the bread fell into honey mead, so that's already a thicker mixture. That is typically thick. And you could only strain that with a more coarse strainer. You would need a strainer with wider holes. Then breadcrumbs could escape. They could get through the strainer. Then Then we have to worry that breadcrumbs might have also gone through the strainer. So we have to worry over here that breadcrumbs might remain in the wine. Even if you took wine out of this barrel before Pesach, after you took the bread out, so you had the barrel of wine that the bread fell into on Erev Pesach. You took the bread out. Now you took wine from this barrel and you put it into another barrel. That second barrel would be totally usher. Because maybe breadcrumbs now got into the second barrel. Then the Ramah said over here, we worry about the Pirurin, and we worry that they gave Tam, they contributed Tam to the mixture on Pesach. The nice in Tam the Pesach. Says the Mishtaburah is cut Lam Ches, the nice Tam the Pesach. Vav the Bitsain and Yesh Haibe Matirim, look how on Bissim and Tufs of Zion, Tufs Sam of Zion, Sif Yud Bays. We seem to be dealing over here with a cold mixture. We have bread that fell into wine. And the implication in Simon Tav Sam of Zayin is that by cold, we don't worry about any tam. Over here it would be oser. Because we're talking about a case where the bread sat in the wine for 24 hours. In that case, we don't need heat for a transference of tam. The soaking for 24 hours could cause a transference of tam. That we say over there, if a piece of bread falls into water on Pesach, that water becomes aser immediately, because it is the nature of bread that when it falls into water, it disintegrates. And it melts away into the water. And even straining the water does not help. Here too, even if the bread sat in the, in the wine for less than 24 hours, it would be usher. 
unless he strained it before Pesach, because then we know that you removed any whole crumbs, and then we're only dealing with the, the bread that totally disintegrated into the yayin, and that's like Tam, that would be the Bishishim. When they made honey mead, there was a thickness that went, that rose to the top that you would have to strain off. If you strained it off using a sifter that was commonly used for flour, so you took your flour sifter and you used it to strain out the mead, you're still allowed to drink that mead on Pesach, the bottle, Bishishim, because anything that escaped from that flour sifter into your honey mead is bottle b'shishim to have you lach balach, because that is considered a mixture of lach balach. What are we worried about? We're worried possibly about kemach. We're worried possibly about flour that remained on the sifter escaping into the mead. But we already said earlier in this year that kemach is considered lach. So over here you have kemach mixing into honey mead. That's a mixture of lach balach then we would follow the Mokuludik opinion. We would not say Chayz of Ineir. We would say it's bottle on Erev Pesach. It remains bottle for the duration of Pesach. Thank you for joining me for the Shir. Mirz Hashem. I'll see you all, I guess, next Sunday morning at... Oh, Sunday is Rosh Chodesh. Sunday is Rosh Chodesh. Okay, I think we could still do 9.30. If, if it turns out to be a problem, I'll keep you posted. No pun intended. I'll be posting... This share, Mir Sashem Su. Be well.